Hello everyone, in this lecture I am going to discuss about the bleeding that is to be appear during pregnancy period and when it is going to be happen after the viability of the fetus or you can say after 28 week of gestation then it is to be called as APH, antepartum hemorrhage. So this is the high risk condition and uh, the most common reason of APH is placenta derived. So it is again classified into two placenta previa and abruptio placenta. So in this lecture I am going to briefly explain about the placenta previa, what it is and what are the basic types and uh, what is the clinical picture is there. So the placenta previa as the name denotes, it means the placenta is coming in front previously. Okay. So previa is a Latin word that means in front, before. Okay. So what happened in placenta previa? Uh, normally we know that the placenta is the main structure that nourishes the fetus. So that is implanted in the upper segment okay, in normal condition. But here what happened? The placenta is uh, lying in the lower segment over the internal os or it may be near the internal os. Okay. So when the placenta is going to be implanted in the lower segment uh, over the internal os or just near the structure then this is to be called as placenta previa. So this is very dangerous because the placenta is lying in front of the presenting part of the fetus. So what are the causes behind this placenta previa? Exactly there is no reason is there but there are some risk factors that aggravate this condition. So if the advancing age of mother is there, uh, the mother is pregnant for the first time in a late age and uh, if there is any multi is there where she have already given a birth of two or more than uh, that babies. So in these conditions what happened? Uh, there is an aging process of the vessels of the uterus. So uh, with the aging of the vessels, the, the upper segment is not able to uh, implant the placenta over there. So that's why the placenta get implanted in a lower segment. And suppose if the mother had already caesarean section previously then uh, or any curettage is there previous. So in these condition what happened? Uh, if previously already scar is there, that previous scar favors the implantation of the placenta there. Because in caesarean section we know that the most common we are practicing is the lower segment caesarean section. So the scar in the lower segment. So the scar has good amount of oxygen as well as collagen fibers that favors the placenta to be implanted there. And if the mother is habituate to smoke, if she smokes very heavily then uh, she may have carbon monoxide in their body and that may cause hypoxemia. So with this hypoxemia the placental tissues grows more there is a placental hypertrophy so because of that the placenta is more large and the, that to be encroach up to the lower segment and suppose the mother is having multiple gestation uh, twin pregnancy in that condition what happened there may be a one big placenta or there may be a two placenta so in either of the condition the placenta is going to be implant up to the lower segment um, because there is a larger surface area of the placenta to supply more fetuses. So these are the risk factors where the placenta is going to be implant in a lower segment or it can encroaches up to the lower segment. So with such type of risk factors the placenta and cord abnormalities may be there. So there may be a chance of placenta sesenturata where the extra lobe is going to be formed and that to be uh, slightly away from the main portion of the placenta and there may be a cord abnormalities like battle door placenta where the placenta is attached with the margin uh, the cord is going to be attached with the margin which is usually originated from the center isn't so and uh, there may be chance of velamentous insertion of cord where the vessels as well as the cord is inserting from slightly away from the main portion of the placenta. It is not originating at the center, it is originated from the 
slightly away from the main portion of the placenta. So, these type of cord and placental abnormalities can be seen with this placenta previa. So, these abnormalities I already discussed previously in the abnormalities of placenta and cord that you can watch there. Now, let's talk about the types of placenta previa. So, there are classically four types, type 1, 2, 3, 4. So, type 1 means there is a low lying placenta where the placenta is in a lower segment but it is not reaches up to the internal os of the cervix. Yes. Second is marginal. In marginal what happened the edge of the placenta touches the rim of internal os. That margins are going to be touched by this placental tissues. So, this is called the marginal placenta previa. That is called type 2 placenta previa and the next is the type 3 placenta previa that is uh, the in incomplete or the partial placenta previa where the placenta is going to be implanted over the internal os but what happened uh, once the cervix is going to be dilate it partially occlude the cervical opening so it is partially covering the cervical os so that's why it is called partial and the fourth type is the complete where whether the cervix is completely closed or it is dilated. In either of the condition, the placenta completely lies over the internal os. So, that is called complete. So, the type 3 and type 4 is usually categorized into the major type of placenta previa. And the type 1 and type 2 is in the category of minor placenta previa. But out of them, the type 2 posterior placenta previa is very dangerous. Because placenta can be attached anteriorly or posteriorly, but once it is attached posteriorly, then what happens uh, when it is attaching po posteriorly, then it is lying over the sacral region. So, once it lies over the sacral region, what happens? Uh, it reduces the diameter of anterior posterior in the inlet, pelvic brim. So, when the diameter of anterior posterior decreases, the fetal head or whatever the part of the presentation is there, it won't be engaged down. So, there may be a difficulty in engaging of the presenting part with this type 2 posterior placenta previa. So, the type 2 posterior as well as 3 and 4 are the dangerous one. But this classification is again modified by NIH that is National Institute of Health and uh, it is categorized under 2 that is placenta previa and the low line. So, the term placenta previa is usually described for a type 3 and type 4 placenta previa where the placenta in a lower segment but it partially covers the internal os or it completely covers the internal os. So, in type 3 and type 4 which is classified previously usually comes under the true placenta previa and the second category is the low line in which the type 1 and type 2 previously categorized come under this where the placental edges or the placental tissues come in the perimeter of 2 cm from the internal os. Okay? So, if the placental tissues are coming in the perimeter of 2 cm from this internal os that is to be categorized in low line. Okay? So, the type 1 and type 2 comes under this. But what happened if we diagnose this placenta previa in early week of pregnancy? by sonographically that the placenta is low lying then what happened in late second or third trimester in majority of condition this low lying placenta is usually uh, relocate itself and it shifted toward the upper segment. So, what is the principle behind this is that the in second in late second and third trimester the size of the lower segment and the upper segment progressively increases and that's why if the implantation of placental tissue is just near the internal os but not up to the internal os okay so if it is lying just near the internal os it will relocate itself in the upper segment because what happened there is a phenomena of trophotropism that is the vascularity of upper segment that is in the fundal region is more and that will allows the fundal tissues the placental tissues to implant there so because of this trophotropism phenomena 
because of the high vascularity the tissues are usually located there so in a late trimester what happened in late second and third trimester the tissues are shifted upward upside so that is called the placental migration but suppose if in early week of pregnancy we identify that the placental tissues are in the cervical region then it won't be possible that with the enlargement of this lower segment or the upper segment these placental tissue shifted from lower to upper segment okay it is only be possible in low lying placenta where uh, the tissues are not involving or not encroaching in the cervical region okay so the tissues which encroaches in the cervical region that remain as it is and that may cause uh, type 3 and type 4 um, placenta previa now let's talk about its uh, symptom so the classical symptom of this placenta previa is only the vaginal bleeding that is bright red because once the placenta gets separated the blood oozes out and it will directly comes out through the vaginal introitus so this is the fresh blood so this is bright red in color and this bleeding this vaginal bleeding is usually painless because once the bleeding is going to be happen the woman is not uh, complaining of any pain because she may uh, say that uh, i'm just taking a rest and suddenly i wake up and found that i'm lying in a pool of a vaginal bleeding so this is causeless this is painless because there is no exact reason for its separation so this is causeless this is painless and it could be recurrent because initially there may be a warning hemorrhage that could be a transient less an amount but it can be reappear but when it is to be happen that cannot be predicted previously so the vaginal bleeding is the only symptom that could be appear in a woman so if we uh, check other signs and if we want to know more then if we go for the abdominal examination we found that the height of the fundus usually correspond with the week of gestation it means it is almost similar it will not more and it will not be less okay so this will be equal and uh, if we check the fetal heart sound then in majority of condition the fetal heart sound is also okay it will be good okay that will also not alter because the bleeding the the bleeding which is to be appear is mainly from the placental or the maternal origination it is not from the fetus origination so the fetal heart sound would be the same or there may be no alteration and along with that if we go for the uterine palpation then uh, the uterus feels soft because the uterus may not be tender uh, as there is no contraction so it may feel soft okay but there are frequent malpresentation with this placenta previa as the placenta is low lying so there may be a difficulty in engaging of presenting part so there may be a breech presentation or maybe uh, the lie would be changed and it could be in a transverse so frequent malpresentation and malposition could be seen uh, in this placenta previa by abdominal examination but in this condition we never try to introduce finger in the vagina uh, to check its type because if we are doing per vaginal examination that may cause more separation and more heavy bleeding so we need to be avoid this per vaginal examination which may cause further placental separation so these are the signs and symptom that could be appear in placenta previa so here in this lecture we have discussed about the placenta previa what it is what are the risk factors types and the clinical picture thank you